Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and today we're going to talk about two more file formats to get your data from Fusion 360 into Blender. Hey everyone, this is Matt, and today we want to carry on our Fusion to Blender series. We've already talked about using a Fusion 360 file, converting it to an OBJ or a 3MF format. We've looked at how these different formats are affected in Blender in terms of scale, in terms of the way that the mesh bodies actually come in, and what we can do to break them back apart into the original configurations. But now we're going to take a look at two more different file types that allow us to carry the data from Fusion 360 or really any other CAD software directly into Blender. The first thing that we want to talk about is the STL format. STL or stereolithography is a common format that has been used for many years when we're talking about additive manufacturing. Generally, you can take this STL file directly into some sort of 3D print utility. If you're using a standard desktop printer, a lot of times they'll have their own utilities and you can bring that STL file directly in there. One thing that we want to note when we're creating an STL file in Fusion is that we have the ability to configure the mesh density. This can be done a few different ways in Fusion. If we go to the Tools menu, we have a Make section and we have 3D Print under Make. We also have under the File dropdown an option to 3D Print and we can also select Export and use STL. We also can right click on the Fusion Rim to Blender at the very top level of our browser. And if we look through here, you'll notice that we also have an export option. We also have the ability to select an individual component, right click and export that component. What we're gonna do for this example is we're gonna select everything in the browser. We're gonna right click and we're gonna select export. From export, notice that we have to choose the file type that we're looking at. In this case, if we scroll through this list, you'll notice that we don't have STL listed here. STL is not listed in the export options, but we do have other file types such as STEP or STP. We're gonna cancel this export and instead, we're gonna to go to our tools menu and we're gonna select make. Under this make menu, it's gonna automatically select 3D print utility as an option. We'll just simply deselect that since we're gonna be saving the STL externally. We do want to expand the refinement options that we have and note that we can select the STL, whether it's a 3MF or an STL binary file. We can also determine the units. In this case, setting the units to meter will help because that's the units we're going to be using by default in Blender. We can preview the mesh. We can use a specific mesh refinement or go all the way to custom. In this case, if we use a custom mesh refinement, we can determine the mesh element sizes. We are dealing with multiple components or in reality, multiple bodies. So this is more of a global setting unless we specifically select one body to export. This allows us to get an extremely fine mesh, which will help us preserve those sharp corners when we bring it into Blender. And we apply things like a smoothing shader or even if we're trying to use some modifiers. I'm gonna select okay on this custom setting. And then I need to determine where I wanna save it. For me, I'm going to save it where all of my other files are located. And at the end of this, instead of V1, I'm simply going to just put STL, makes it easier for me to find, and select Save. Before we do anything else, let's talk about the other file format, and that is an FBX format. We're going to go to File, select Export, and we're going to select FBX from our list. This is the same process that we use to export a 3MF or an OBJ file. FBX files might take a little bit more time to convert, and generally what ends up happening is the FBX format is intended to carry a little bit more data than we're actually passing from Fusion to Blender. This is typically something that you would use if you have uh, animation data or more elaborate scene setup data, and that's more than Fusion can really provide us. However, the FBX format does have something that is extremely important, and we'll take a look at it when we get into Blender. Since I've already exported this and it does take a little bit of time, I'm going to say no, but it's important that you do export that FBX. That way, as it's going through the process of converting it, we can take a look at the STL in Blender. Having said that, let's go ahead and hop over to Blender now. In Blender, as soon as we start up, it wants to begin a general document. I'm going to begin by selecting the cube and deleting it, but I'm going to leave the camera and the light in the scene. We're going to first go to File, Import, 
And we want to look through this list and we want to select our STL file. I'm going to go to the location where I saved my STL and I'm going to import it. Without making any additional changes, when we look at this STL file, it actually looks pretty good. You can see when we zoom in that we can actually identify the mesh element sizes. And if we hit tab to go into edit mode, we can see that we have a lot of small mesh elements. We rotate this around, it's preserved the shape really nicely and we don't really have any problems with the shape in general. If I use my measure tool and go across, we should get about half a meter. And you can see here we're right at about 0.513. So this tells me that the size of the object, in this case our rim, is correct when we imported it. So because we did have the ability to grab, in this case, the units when we were saving it as an STL, it was able to capture that data and bring it in without any problems. Remember, the default units is going to be meters, and that's going to have a scale of 1.0. So if you're exporting in meters, it's going to have it scaled properly. If we take a look at our scene collection, you'll notice that we have one object. So all of the different mesh bodies, the rim, the tire, and the brake rotor all came in as one. So we have to go through the process of breaking them up. And unlike bringing in the OBJ or the 3MF, notice that we don't have that material data. The 3MF broke the bodies up, so we had three individual mesh bodies, or in some case more, and the OBJ file didn't break them up, but it separated them out by their appearances or their materials. So that is an important consideration that we want to make sure we understand. Next, let's go to File, Import, and let's grab that last format, the FBX. The FBX file, again, I'm simply going to navigate to the location where I saved it. Notice on the right-hand side, we have a bit more in terms of the properties that we can bring in. Notice that animation data can come in. We don't have any with Fusion, so we can turn that off. Notice that there is some armature information that can come in. We don't, again, in Fusion, don't really have that information, so it doesn't really matter if we select these options. It's not going to bring it in. We have some options to do a scale transform, and we can also manually orient it based on our coordinate system. We can include various things such as custom normals. We don't have any subdivision data with this design. If we did have a T-spline body or a form body in Fusion, it's possible it could bring that data over, but I wouldn't really rely on that information. From here, I'm gonna import it, simply turning off that uh, animation and instantly we can see that the result looks a whole lot different than anything else that we've brought in. When we take a look at this, the appearances have actually been captured and brought over. We have the shiny material for the rim, we have a black tire with a shiny material on the end, and then we have the brake rotor. Now, when we look at this inside of our scene collection, it looks a little bit different. This icon here, if we go to add and you take a look at the icons, you can see that this is an empty. When we add an empty, it's generally a good place to begin creating or positioning other items. Uh, in this case, the empty actually contains additional empties underneath them with additional mesh bodies. So if we break this down, you can see as we continue to go through, we have the empty at the very top level. We have the rim. And then as we keep going down, we have the body, which was in fusion, the body underneath our component. So we're carrying the component, then we're carrying the body underneath it, then the body has this paint enamel gloss applied to it. If we go to the rotor, we can see that the same thing is carried. We have a stainless steel, and if we go to the tire and we expand this, you can see that we have the individual body. And you'll notice that it actually brings in a bumpy rubber on the outside, and the enamel on the raised white letters, and then the weathered rubber for the majority of the tire. So Instantly, this structure, I'm going to go ahead and let's just resize this a little bit. The structure looks a lot more like it does in Fusion. We have the breakdown of our components and bodies, and we even have the breakdown of the additional materials that are being applied. This means that we can come in here and we can modify those additional materials directly inside of Blender. So if we want to make adjustments to the weathered rubber or the bumpy rubber or even the color of the raised white letters, we can modify those directly inside of here, and we can use that information downstream to have some sort of overall effect. 
You will note that there is one downside to this process, and the fact that we apply the exact same appearance for the rim and the raised white letters means that they are still linked in here. So the paint for the rim and the paint for the raised white letters are directly related to each other. So you do have to keep that in mind if you are applying those appearances in the same way in Fusion. You generally wanna have at least a copy of the appearance or maybe just a completely different appearance altogether if your workflow is dictating that you bring this into Blender. So at this point, we've looked at four different individual file types bringing this data from Fusion to Blender. At this point, if your workflow is going to dictate that you are gonna take the time to apply appearances to an object in Fusion 360 and carry that data directly over to Blender for some additional rendering or visualization purposes, then the FBX format seems to be the quickest and it has the best resolution on the components. If we take a look at the mesh resolution, you can see that the corners have a much finer mesh and then the larger faces have these larger triangles. So this tells me that it's doing a much better job of preserving those features, and it's giving us the bare minimum in terms of the number of faces that we need to represent the geometry that we have. So this is a really good way to carry this data over. If you're looking to do more destructive modeling, if you're looking to apply some modifiers and do some smoothing in Blender, then bringing the design over as an OBJ or a 3MF might be a better option. Remember that the OBJ will bring a single mesh body, but it'll break it apart based on those materials. The 3MF format, which does require that you download and use an add-on, will allow you to bring in those components individually. The STL really has its main benefit in the fact that we can have direct control over the mesh resolution when we export it. That is really the main benefit to the STL, and honestly, it's not really a big deal. If you look at the difference between the STL and the FBX, the FBX actually looks quite a bit better. So I really don't see a huge benefit to bringing in an STL unless you have direct control or you want a very specific mesh element size. The overall quality of the FBX looks better. So in my mind, there's really only two major options. If you're bringing data directly from Fusion to Blender for the purposes of rendering or visualization, I would stick with the FBX. You can do a little prep work in Fusion, make sure that you have unique or individual appearances applied to each thing that you want if you do want them truly to be separated. And then you can use that FBX format to carry that data over. If you're really looking to just bring the generic model or the mesh body over and you wanna do some additional manipulation of it, then something like a 3MF can be a good option because it still does break those mesh bodies up and it allows you to bring it over and it drops off all those appearances or materials. So those are the two main workflows that I would consider. And again, there's plenty more. This is not the only way that you can bring data from Fusion or any other CAD software into Blender, but those are the four main ways that people will use for various purposes. If you have any questions, please let me know. As I said, I do plan to carry on this series um, hopefully talking more about rendering and visualization with these fusion objects, but it can really go anywhere. So if you have additional comments or something that you want to see, I'll do my best to try to capture that data. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.